If the Bears can do it, why can't we? Big Deek News. If you guys haven't noticed, the Chicago Bears offense all of a sudden looks pretty good. Justin Fields, as a quarterback, looks pretty good. That's over these last two weeks. And that's coming off of from the first three weeks. They were probably the worst offense in the league, even worse than us. And dating back to last year, they were easily one of the bottom three offenses in the league. So if they can turn it around, why not the Pittsburgh Steelers? Now, I don't know if it's a coincidence that over these last two games, the Bears didn't play Chase Claypool. In fact, they just traded him to the Miami Dolphins. So maybe that's the secret. Because last year, whenever the Steelers traded Chase Claypool, we all of a sudden went on a 7-2 and two run and almost made the playoffs. And then for the Bears, they've been dismal ever since they got Claypool and had him in the lineup. And then all of a sudden, these last two weeks, they sit him, make him inactive, tell him to don't come to the facilities, and Justin Fields is lighting it up. So maybe the Steelers should have traded for Claypool today instead of the Dolphins, and then we just should have cut him, and all of a sudden, we would have got some good mojo, good momentum. I think that's the thing. And that's what the Dolphins might find out at some point through this season. If they go on a slump, they might need to cut ties with Claypool. Then all of a sudden, they might go on a winning streak. Because that seems to be the case whenever you bring in a Claypool and then you get rid of them. My thing is this. You could say I'm flip-flopping my takes, this and that. I, I don't think I am, really. It's just more or less how many times can I come up here on a mic and say Fire Canada. That's where I'm at right now. I think we should Fire Canada. I think we should. We need to shake up with this offense. Hasn't been good, but we're not firing them. Canada is still here as the OC. There hasn't been a shakeup. So now we have another week, another game in front of us. And could things change? Yes, technically they can. This is the NFL. The Bears are the example of that. How all of a sudden is Justin Fields thrown for over 300 yards and looking like a top five quarterback all of a sudden? How? You can't explain it. It's the NFL. Shit happens. So that's all I'm saying for this week. It's a new week. So there is hope. Is it a glimmer of hope? Is it a little bit of hope? Remember, Red, hope is a good thing. Maybe the best of things. And no good thing ever dies. Like if the offense does go off this week and Kenny looks good, throws for multiple touchdown passes, maybe we get three, 400 yards of total offense, and we win the game, we're on top of the AFC North. I think a lot of people's tunes would change on the offense in Matt Canada, at least for the week at least to the point where Canada would buy himself more time because the same thing happened from that Sunday Night Football Raiders game. No one was talking about Canada at all for that whole week because the offense looked good, but that's how crazy things are in the NFL. Things can literally change in a snap of a finger on a dime on a week-to-week -week basis. Now, I get it. That's the kind of insanity or like the cycle that we're in right now. Even if it does look good, how much faith do we have that that is going to continue and that's going to be consistent for the rest of the season? And that is a fair criticism. It's 100% fair criticism. But I could be up here and yelling for Fire Canada for the 15th time this week, and it's like, okay, I get it. Yeah, the offense has been sucking, but there is another option that could play out this week, and that is the offense does bounce back. The Steelers do win this game. And we will be on top of the AFC North. Like, that is very, very, very plausible. In fact, that's what I'm picking to happen. Again, if the Bears can do it, why not us? The Bears offense has looked way more dismal than ours over the last couple of years. And you see the results that they're putting out right now. It was like the same scenario. You could look up headlines all over the place. Bears fans, Bears media, they're calling for the head coach's job. They're calling for the offensive coordinator's job. They're thinking that Justin Fields ain't it. All of a sudden, these last two weeks, you think they're saying the same thing? Uh, but even, too, you, you see Zach Wilson outplay a Patrick Mahomes last Sunday Night Football. If that could happen, it's not too far of a stretch that the Steelers' offense can go back to what they look like against the Raiders in Week 3. That's not out of hand. If the Bears' offense can turn it around, if Zach Wilson can, for the most part, outplay Patrick Mahomes because Mahomes did win the game that's what really matters end of the day but in terms of stats wilson looked better than mahomes how do you explain it i could explain the steelers just getting back to what they looked like from week three like that's not that crazy not at all so with this steelers ravens preview i could argue on paper we have some advantages in our direction like if you would have told me a few weeks ago or maybe even before the season 
Kenny Pickett, our receivers versus the Ravens secondary without Marlon Humphrey, I'd be like, oh, this is a slam dunk win for us. We should take advantage of this. But fast forward to today, Marlon Humphrey might actually be coming back for this game. He was listed limited for practice. And just the fact that Kenny Pickett in this passing game for the Steelers hasn't been consistent enough to make you feel like you have this clear-cut advantage against the Ravens secondary. On the other side of the ball, uh, our defense, our secondary versus like the Ravens receivers in passing game. I would have told you like, yeah, we should be fine. All they got is Zay Flowers. Rashad Bateman ain't doing anything. Odell Beckham's banged up. You also got a Mark Andrews, but weirdly, we've been doing decent against tight ends this year. The problem has been our secondary, and that's something I thought would be a strength. Levi Wallace coming off a career year. Asan and Pat P thought he still had gas left in the tank. Minka ain't showing up like the Minka that we're used to seeing. Our other safeties have been quiet with Keanu Neal and DeMonte Casey. We're not playing JPJ enough, so I don't know exactly what to think there. And obviously, when you go up against the Ravens, your number one goal, your number one key is to stop the run. That is what the Ravens are known for. And even in that scenario, like on paper, we should be able to do that. Ravens don't have J.K. Dobbins anymore. Now, they'll always be formidable with Lamar Jackson and whatever running back they put out there from the trio that they have in their running back room. But you look at our defense, even though we're missing Cam Hayward, you know, you got an Ogunjobi, you got a Keanu Benton, Highsmith, TJ Watt, our inside linebackers are pretty decent run stoppers. Like on paper, we should be able to do that. That's not too tall of a task. But what have we done in the run defense department this year? Not good. We made Damian Pierce uh, look awesome. 49ers-Browns game were pretty dismal. Uh, Raiders game was the only one that looked good for us. So, uh, yeah, that's the number one key. We we can't be messing around. We can't come out flat like we did against Houston. We got to set the tone. And you look back last year against the Ravens in the two games we played. First one, it looked like Houston. We weren't physical enough. The Ravens ran all over us. But the Sunday night football game, was a different story. We definitely contained the Ravens' run attack, and that's what we got to do in this one. And despite being 3-1 and one right now, I don't think the Ravens are that good. They are good. You get what I'm saying? The Ravens are always like a consistent, good team, but they're not that amazing. I, I think they've benefited from a pretty easy schedule thus far. Last week, they went up against the Browns without Deshaun Watson. They lost to the Colts without Anthony Richardson. Gardner Minshew-led Colts beat the Ravens in Baltimore. Uh, they went up against the Bengals with Joe Burrow, still playing bad and having rust. And then week one went up against the Texans, rookie C.J. Stroud's first game. Now, obviously, the Texans look better than what we thought. But to catch Stroud in his first game, to catch Tamika Ryans and that whole new regime in their first game, I think that's something that benefited the Ravens with how their schedule played out. End of day, we just got to win this one, and we will be able to have those bragging rights and say we are better than you guys. Not only did we win, but now we also are in the number one spot of the AFC North. And going up against Lamar Jackson, obviously, he's an X-Factor, really good player, top 10 quarterback in this league. We've done good against him traditionally. You could look at his stats. He averages multiple turnovers against us, and I believe he's only one and two against Pittsburgh in the games that he has started. And the one went to overtime. He was doling it out with Doc Hodge, and if Juju didn't fumble in OT, I think we end up winning that game. So there's that. Um, I'm going Steelers money line, putting my money where my mouth is. I have faith that we get the job done at home, backs up against the wall. I think we come out guns blazing. And this is to make up for my... <laughs> My big deke investment from last weekend. I forgot the screenshot, it, but I'll show you right now. It was Saturday night. I just didn't really think much of it. I, I was just like, you know what? I hit on the uh, Pirates win total over under. I also hit on the WNBA MVP bet with Brianna Stewart winning that. So my account was looking good. I think I had like 200 in my account. So I was like, this is big deke investments, right? I think there's no way that the Steelers lose against Texas tomorrow. I, I literally can't see a path that it happens. Like, you guys heard how I was doing the Steelers-Texans preview. You saw what energy I was on. So, yeah, I was like, I, I put 150 bucks on the money line to win, like, 90-something. So that 150 is gone. I think I'm left with 40, and I'm just putting it all on the Steelers this week. Hopefully my account will start going back up into that green. But that is it for today's edition of Big Deke News. Hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know your predictions for this Steelers-Ravens game. Have a good weekend. Stay safe out there, and peace.